Once again, everybody, it is so good to see everybody. Can you do me a big favor? Could you welcome everyone? Give yourself a hand and everyone that's watching online. Nice and big and loud. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's so good to be back here at church. I know last week we had to take a little, uh, little siesta because of circumstances, but we're so glad to be back again, and we want to welcome everyone that's watching online. And if it's your first time here, the Cornerstone, either here or watching online, we have personally want to welcome you. My name is Eric Bucci. I'm the lead pastor here, and so it's an honor you've chosen to come here today and to worship with us, whether it's virtual or right here in person. Hey, I just want to remind everybody why we exist as a church, why Cornerstone Church is even here in the first place, and it's always important to ask ourselves the question, why do we do what we do? It's the why that should motivate to what we do, and the reason we're here is very simply is that Jesus Christ died on the cross for us paid for the sins we could not pay for. And so our objective here at Cornerstone Church is to help people come to know God. And that happens through a relationship with Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we believe that. That's our number one uh, goal is that people come to know God. And once you know God, it's a continuing process because you can never exhaust knowing God. And when you know God, the next thing you want to do is find freedom. And we find freedom through Jesus Christ who begins to set us free from the things that hold us back. It happens through Christ and it happens through his body. That's why we join together. That's why we're involved with small groups. And we begin to find freedom. Then all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute here. There's a purpose for my life. You begin to discover the reason why you're alive. That everyone, God has called every single person, every person is custom built to do something that no one else can do. That you are an original and God wants to release you in that area to be his representation here on this planet. And guess what? We get to make a difference. The final thing, we get to make a difference together. That we can do more together than we can by ourselves. And so one of the ways we make a difference is by having a Sunday morning like this to help us to grow together in Christ where people can give their lives to Jesus Christ, to get right with God. We also have opportunities to spread out when your workplaces, wherever God has placed you and your families. And we're so gracious and grateful for the missionaries that we partner with around the world from Indonesia to India to Haiti. And I want to introduce you in a few moments a wonderful gentleman his name is Dr. Franco. We support a ministry called Go Haiti. And we've been that way for several years now. We had a couple different mission trips that went there. And let me tell you, it's wonderful to see what God is doing in Haiti, which is the poorest of the poor, one of the poorest nations on the face of the planet. But God is doing something very special in Haiti. And Haiti's been going through a lot. But what happened was this. There was a little boy that was an orphan. And he, fe- he came to know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And he felt called to go into the medical field. He went to school, became a doctor. He went from Haiti and he went around the world. And he was a doctor in these special, these third world countries and doing amazing things. And God called him back to Haiti to raise up the next generation. And so it's been a wonderful blessing to see uh, God's basically what we're praying to happen in these orphanages is what Dr. Franco is. Would you please welcome back to Cornerstone Church, Dr. Franco. Awesome. Well, it's so good to see Dr. Franco. And he's a doctor, so he takes these masks seriously. So it's good, right? Okay. (laughs) <laughs> okay, we're at the right distance now. And, and by the way, thank you everybody for partic- participating. I know there's different views on it, but uh, clearly it does help, and that's why we do it. And so we thank you for preferring your brother over yourself to wear these things for an hour or so. We thank you for that. We appreciate it. We're well, Dr. Franco. It's great to see you here once again. And thank you. We had an amazing time coming to visit you a couple times, and uh, uh, we also have Joe Scaramuzu and Stephanie, who uh, are board members of also of Go Haiti. And so it's a blessing. To be able to get hands on and be able to go and see what God is doing. I'm Haiti. glad to be here. And it's been a trying time for everyone in the world, hasn't it? Yes, indeed. <laughs> right before this time, there's been some political uprisings in Haiti. And, and as a result, we had not been able to travel the last year or so. And, and so that happened. And then COVID came. So, and then the COVID. So why don't you give us a little update what's going on and show some pictures. That'd be great. Well, um, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to come back to see my extended spiritual family. 
and from different mother, but from the same father, God. Amen. Amen. So I'm glad to be here, and uh, you will suffer my accent for the next 15 minutes. Huh? You, you do understand what I mean? Okay, good. So I thank God for Pastor Eric. I thank God also for Stephanie and Joe, for Luke and Joshua, for this family who stand with me from the very beginning of this ministry. And, uh, and through them and through other people like you, we were able to make a difference and we continue to make a difference in Haiti. Yeah. I thank God also for Pastor Eric and Brother Arnold. They had a wonderful, amazing trip to the mountain of Haiti. And I'm not here to explain to you the adventure with the rats and the, the, the <laughs> and I have never heard somebody uh, raising his voice like Pastor Eric <laughs> when the rat came to it the room. It was demonic. It was, it was demonic. <laughs> that was a demonic rat. Uh, no, that was a rat that came to your room for room service. Yeah. Okay. It so, my toe. But anyhow, that's what's happening. Okay. So that was a long yeah, story. It did. Okay. But we thank God for people like you who will leave their comfort zone yeah. and to go to Willy Wolf area of, uh, in, uh, on the planet to reach out to other people. And uh, I am very grateful for people like you. Without you leaving your comfort zone to go to area where you would not like and, uh, and I would not be rich. I was growing up in Haiti in the mountain and often rejected by my father and having a mother who doesn't know how to read and, and write and uh, growing up in the voodoo. And I have never heard about Jesus before I met Mom Eleonore Workman. And then at the age of 10, I ended up being in the orphanage. Sometime in our life, things happen and we think it's a curse, but this is the beginning of your victory. And actually, so I, going up to this um, orphanage, I heard, for, I heard about Christ for the first time. And I embraced him because deep down in my heart, I was looking for a father. I was looking for a father type because, you know, a, a young boy, and I don't know for other culture, but in Haiti, uh, when you don't bear the name of your father, it's a big deal. Mm. And and I I understand early that I did not bear his name, and my friend never missed the occasion to let me know that why you don't bear the name of your father. So when I get to this orphanage, I and I heard for the first time that God and Christ could be my father. I embrace him. I embrace him, and I remember as a young boy, I say, God, I want you to be my father, and I mean it. Mm. And uh, from, from, from that moment that I received Christ, it's like light shining in the darkness. And the rest is history. Because this missionary poured down his, her heart uh, uh, and her love and affection and giving me hope. And giving me uh, again uh, a possibility to regain my composure, to, to, to believe in life. So I went to school and from school going to medical school and from medical school bringing me here to Miami Jackson Memorial Hospital to do my specialty and then getting involved with Doctors Without Borders doing emergency surgery, traveling all over the world to give what God has freely given to me and then going back again to Haiti to reach out other Franco and other often who would not have a chance to make it without people like you and I. Mm -hmm. So I was blessed to meet Pastor yeah. Eric who went to Haiti to see the work that we are doing, to see the kids and to see the orphanage and to work hard to change. Uh, uh, one thing I need to mention, yeah. um, in Haiti, it is a blessing when you hear the rain falling, especially if you have a tin roof. And the, the, the noise of the rain is a blessing. But for years, this blessing was like a curse because we have leaks in the orphanage. And when the rain comes, we have to put buckets there and buckets there. So the 
thing that used to be a pleasure turned to be a problem. And then Cornerstone came. And then Pastor Eric and Stephanie and Joe and the entire church. And I believe they went to change some piece of iron. And then they end up changing the entire roof, which was good. So now we can go back again, enjoying the rain falling. We can laugh at the rain. Thanks to you, now we can laugh at the rain when it is falling. And we go from windows that was ugly with blocks we could not afford to do it now we have nice and beautiful windows I want you to know that you have made a difference in the life of those kids in Haiti and with you I have really a great confidence that we will go farther thank you so much I'm here on behalf of the kids in the orphanage on behalf of the staff the people that you help to pay every day I'm here to say thank you and I'm also here to invite you to come back again I know that the COVID will be over soon God will provide a vaccine and then and the, the riots will come down. You'll be able to come again to serve and to love. And I said that you are qualified because if you can make a child laugh, you are qualified. If you can change a diaper, you are qualified. If you can feed a child, you are qualified. If you can play frisbee with a boy, you are qualified. The moment that I remind the most, Pastor Eric, when I was in the orphanage, that was not the moment when you bring a big gift. That was a moment when a missionary came and hold me in their arm and let me feel that I was important. And I'm 53. I still remember those moments. So when you go to Haiti, you hold a child in your arm and you let him, him or her know that you love mm -hmm. him. That means a lot to them. And that means a lot to me. So thank you so much oh, for having so me. I'm glad to be here. And uh, I, would, I would talk forever and ever. But I know there is a time to respect. That's true. <laughs> I don't respect it very often myself. But anyhow, it, it's so good. I, I want to give you an opportunity just to maybe share a little bit, show some pictures a little bit, and we'll get right into the message. But yes. I tell you, Dr. Franco, it, it's, um, it, it was such a blessing. It would change your life. When we went to Haiti, it was phenomenal. You know, it was so nice. Sometimes you don't know where the money goes, but man, we see where it goes, and it's and has integrity, and we're able to make a difference. We're able to send something and see something take place. And there's some needs that we do have. We want to be able to help the children to have, um, because of all that's going on, right? Because of the COVID, because of the political unrest, you want to make a school in your own compound there. And there's different. We can go on and on, but I just thought I'd just share some immediate needs we have right now. Yes, um, we have, um, right now in Haiti, it doesn't go well at all. We have all kind of political problem. And as you might hear over the news, we have kidnapping going on and all kind of problem. And I'm never sitting in, in uh, I'm, I still live in Vancouver. I go to Haiti once a month, but I live in Vancouver. It's a beautiful city, but in the middle of a peaceful, beautiful uh, town, but I'm still anxious for my kids going out and then they might be kidnapped and people might hurt them. So we are thinking by next year to see if we can keep our kids inside. That means doesn't have to send them out in the neighborhood, keep them in and teach them. So this is one of the projects that you can pray for us. And we don't need anything sophisticated. We just need something to cope with the sun and the rain and then because I start school under a mango tree and, yeah. and, and I, that was the best year of my life. And, uh, but uh, you can help us. But meanwhile, this year, we still need your support to send them to school, to give them all their books, their book bag, their lunch bag and snacks and pay tuition and be able to keep them moving forward. So this is one of the projects. Awesome. I'm going to let you go ahead and share and, and show a couple of things. We'll be back in a little bit. Thanks. Amen. Well, this is our beautiful kids, and uh, I, I said earlier, we have uh, First Samuel and Second Samuel. This is First Samuel, the, the one, two, three, the third one, and it reminds me, Dr. Franco, when I was a little boy like that, maybe a little bit more broad than this, but that was me. We can move in. On top, we have Sophia, we have Dinah, Sophony, Nelan, and all of them. I love them. So I always wanted to be a father of many kids. When I first met with my wife, and I mentioned that I wanted to have 12 kids, and she looked at me and said, with who? I said, okay, okay, but God grant me the desire of my heart. I have several kids now, so I'm blessed. 
This is Linda. This is a long story. We rescued Linda from the beginning of the orphanage from a slave, a slave child, a slavery child network. And then, as you know, they physically abuse, mentally abuse, and sexually abuse. But we brought her in. We loved her, and we educate her. Today, Linda is working with us. She's a beautiful young girl. She's working with us, and she studied cosmetology, and she's one of our staff. And you see her holding plantain and bananas because we grow those things in the orphanage in order to cope with hard time when there is no food we can eat plenty plantain and bananas and we have so much more fruits and things that we can do we're trying to be very resourceful with what we have ah this bench is this pew uh, is it a pew bench Whatever it is, it is uh, on the screen so we can tell you if there is somebody sitting here, you are a carpenter, or you can use a saw, or you can send, you can help me. We need a couple of them because in the mountain, we are planting churches. My desire, my passion is in life is to see churches planted all over. So we've been working on a couple of projects in the mountain. We were able to put the roof and then the wall. We don't have a a floor yet, but the most important part, the people are worshiping, standing all the service because there is no benches, there is no pews. So if there is somebody here, you can help building them. I promise you, I'll go with you in Haiti. I'll feed you. You'll sleep, but we will get 90 of them built like that so the people can sit and worship the Lord. They don't have to sit down on the floor or to stand for the entire service. But if you can not go. There is this motto that I said, if I can go, I will go. If I cannot go, I will send someone, but I will never sit and watch. So if you can't go, you can make sure that somebody else is going in your place to make those things happen. Okay, that's uh, our kids around the table. Sometime we have the, the opportunity to worship the Lord right under the porch. And sometime we have the service under the mango tree. Sometime we use another facility that has been built for a chicken coop. And we transform it into a church. And sometime it's a motel because when we, don't, when we didn't have the guest house, people used to sleep in this area. So it is a chicken coop, a motel, a school, a church. Everything. We use it for everything. But thank God, now you're not going to sleep in a chicken coop. You're going to sleep in a nice guest house with AC, with hot water, with internet, with everything. So you are more than welcome to come back again to Haiti. This is our kids for Christmas. As you can see, they have chicken and macaroni and things like that. We do it every year. And I remind you, Christmas doesn't mean December. Uh, Sometimes we have Christmas uh, early. Sometimes uh, once we even have Christmas in July. So Christmas is not about the month. It's about the moment. And they enjoy it. And this is all the kids. Uh, this is me holding the little girl, Miss Giselle, and this guy. They knew me when I was when I first went to the to the orphanage when I was ten years old. So this is another orphanage. Uh, while I was asking you to pray for me with all kind of problem, and it's like I didn't have enough. God had another orphanage on my hands right now that I need to intervene and help. This is the very orphanage where I grew up, and. Years after now, it uh, under my leadership to help and, and, and do my best to, 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 to sustain. There were 78 of them. We have split them into smaller ones, and those adults, we placed them into a facility where we are helping them to transit into adult life. That's them again, and as you can see, they are full of life. They believe. They have hope. Thanks to you, not only you helped me to feed them, but you helped me to give them hope again. They can believe in life again. And believe, believe it or not, some of them will be good mechanic men, engineers, doctors like me. And from the poorest country, God can raise a nation. 
I would never think that today I would have invitation to go to South Africa, to Malawi, to Ghana, to other country of the world. I was growing up hopeless. But because of missionaries like you who believe that your $50, your $30, your $2 million, your $2 can make a difference into somebody's life, you empower me from Haiti to serve all over the world, in Canada, in Vancouver, in Ghana, in East Africa, in West Africa, you are sending me. And we believe that with you, we can send much more, many more of those kids all over the world to serve by giving them a chance in life. Uh, those are four girls, uh, uh, five girls uh, from the orphanage from CHO. Marianne wants to be a lawyer, and then Widlin wants to be a nurse. Uh, 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 she wants to be a doctor, Marianne, and she wants to be a lawyer. Esther has serious mental issue and mental problem, so we are still looking for some good professional Christian in psychology to help us with them. And we have Widlin, she left, and then Petula. All of them, they do have problem all of them because when you do not grow up with your father and mother it is a problem to begin with and I never I, I and I, and it seems that there is a void in me God has replaced God became my father but for not having the privilege to grow up with a father I find myself even at the age of 53 I'm still looking a father type in my life and uh, so those kids, they need help. The best place to be is with your father and your mother. When you grow up together and you don't have this environment to run, when you have a nightmare at night and you have a mother and a father, right now I have, I have kids 15 years old, 10 years old. They still invade our womb when they have a nightmare. When you don't have this opportunity, this is a big lack. So we need people. You can go as a professional and help me with them. Sit down on a one-on-one with them. Help me with them presenting the gospel, but to cope with the situation that they are living in. But I know God is able to do it. This is again, so you can see they are beautiful and, uh, and uh, we have great needs for clothes, for things to make their hair beautiful. But one thing I do know, I don't know how they do it. They can worn out clothes and shoes in a second. You just give it to them in a few seconds, it's gone. And, and that's why we, we always have a need for clothes, for shoes, and for food. More they grow, I can tell you, I have four kids. I call them cleaners. And you just go to make grocery, they open the fridge, and it's gone. Those kids can eat. So if you, when you support us, you help us to keep them alive and give them an opportunity to enjoy life like every other kid's. This is a long story. Uh, Mom Workman, uh, you see me holding her sh uh, shoulder. She was the one who rescued me when I was 10 years old. She gave me my chance in life. And uh, Pastor Sandra Kennedy from Augusta and adopted Mom Workman as her mom. So we had the same mom. So we call each another brothers and sister from different mother. From the same mother now, and uh, but certainly from the same father. And this is Lionel living in Vancouver. This woman gave me my chance in life. Going to Haiti at a moment when it was very dangerous on the government of Papa Dog and Baby Dog. She doesn't speak any English. And I don't know how she coped because she spent more than 50 years in Haiti. She never spoke English. I don't know. But anyway, she went there to the very village where I was and gave me a chance in life. And this is thank to God through her that I'm standing today and I can do what I'm doing today. So I love her. She passed at the age of 98 years old and God gave me the privilege now. I will never be able to walk in her shoes, but at least I will do what I have learned from her to do in Haiti. 
This is the school, CHO Elementary School. This school is now closed. This is an old picture because after her death, so many things happened. The finance did not come on time and the earthquake has damaged this building and nothing has been done. So basically this school is closed and all those kids are dispersed somewhere. We are in the process of bringing everything together. We can restore the place, bring everything under the leadership of Go Haiti and bring uh, give a chance again to those kids to have to have a school to go. This is Mom Workman at the age when she went to Haiti. So she was about 50 years old when she went to Haiti. Beautiful young woman. I still kept this image in my mind. So you can go too. You can go too. And uh, if somebody, if God speak into your heart, you would like to volunteer six months a year, your life, whatever. We have a nice place for you to stay. We have kids for you to take care. You can teach English. You can do a lot more when you go to Haiti. And we have a nice truck for you. We even have horses for you to ride if you want. But we need your help. We need you to go. This is the church. This church can hold 2,000 people. And uh, it was in the brink of closing. So Go Haiti takes over. We are trying to keep this church alive. And I believe that's the last picture. Is there another one? That is the last picture. So that's all uh, in terms of pictures. There is much more that we can show you. But again, the time is running. Thank you. And uh, now you know. You can pray for us. And if God speaks into your heart, you want to visit, you see Joe, you see Pastor Eric, you see Stephanie, you give me a call. We will make sure that we make that happen. God bless you. So should I proceed, Pastor? Okay, good. Uh, this morning, I would like to share with you something that is very dear to my heart. Um, as a physician, I... I have goals when I have a patient and we have things to do and uh, how to prepare the patient. By the way, my specialty is surgery. I do emergency surgery and train with the Doctors Without Borders of Belgium. So we have goals and we have, I love doing that. This is my passion. I love doing that. But beyond everything, one thing I love to do is to speak about Jesus. This is my passion in life. And one thing I, I like the most is to see people getting saved. So this morning, I would like to share with you the passion that I have. And uh, also, I would like to read uh, 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 a few verses with you in Matthew uh, 28. Matthew 28, that's a chapter that all of us knows. And uh, it is very important that we mentioned this morning that was basically the last encounter, one of the last encounter uh, of Jesus uh, with, uh, with his, his disciple. Let me read that for you. We can get back again into the context. And um, I also need to get my glasses. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm getting there. And uh, oh, that makes a huge difference. Uh, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This verse, um, um, these, these words from Jesus was the last words that he was pronouncing to his disciple before the rapture, before he went to heaven. In general, when somebody is leaving uh, for a long trip or uh, leaving for uh, for 
for a very important time out of home, they usually meet and tell to the people their last will, the last command, things to do. So Jesus was in the brink of getting raptured to the Father, and he wanted to make sure that the disciples understand uh, the, 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 the job that he was about to leave for them. So he gathered them together. You remember when Mary went to the, to the grave, and then he said, uh, tell them to go to Galilee. Tell them to go to Galilee because I have something to communicate to them. And indeed, they went to Galilee and Jesus met with them and tell them, guys, it is done. It is over. My job, uh, I, I was dead. I, I'm, I'm risen now and I'm going to the Father. But this is the deal. This is the thing, the very thing that I want you to remember. I want you, you may forget other things, but this I want you to remember. I commend you. I commend you to go throughout the world and to make disciples. That means to tell the people what I have done for you. To tell the people the very reason that I came. And the disciple listened to that with passion. When we go also in, in, in Act, uh, the first chapter, we are going to read in details uh, uh, while he was talking to them, while he was telling them that, and they were uh, absorbing this message, and it was in the middle of this, Jesus get raptured. So, God and Jesus wanted you and I to remember that. The very reason that we are on earth... The very reason that God and Jesus did not rapture us at the moment that we accept him. Which sometimes I think it sh he should do that. I would be so glad. I get saved today and I get raptured and go to heaven. Some difficulty, some trials and some temptation, I would not be part of it. But God has the program. He keeps you on earth. Why? Because he wants you to share Jesus. That's the reason. That's the main reason you have not been raptured. So when you hear, you need to keep in mind his last word, his last command. And Jesus said that if you love me, you keep my command. If you love me, you keep my command. And what is the command of Jesus Christ? You must go and you must share the gospel of Jesus Christ to other people. Growing up with mom, I used to hear so many old songs. But one of the songs that I cannot forget, this is uh, this song saying like that, throw out the lifeline. So the whole story is somebody, a rescuer, having a lifeline jacket, and somebody is dying, and then you are the one at the moment to throw out the lifeline. Because at that moment, if you waste time, somebody is drifting away. Somebody is dying. Somebody is sinking. And if we lose focus, we are losing People, we are losing people. That's why the gospel is a life jacket. The gospel is hope. The gospel is a way to rescue people. And you have this mission. You may be not called to preach. You may be not called to teach. You may not have the gift of uh, um, to sing, okay? But sharing the gospel is not a gift. It's a given. God give it to every one of you. If you are saved, if you have confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have the mandate, you have the mission, you have the obligation to share the gospel with somebody else. And in Act first, the first chapter, Jesus is giving some more details. You will go to Jerusalem, and then you will go to Judea, and then you will go to Samaria, and then you will go to the end of the world like Haiti, but not going is not an option because it's a must. I was sharing earlier uh, uh, with uh, the first service. Uh, in, in Haiti, they used to give us like one or two hours to write. And they even give you how many words and how many pages that you have to write. And then they give you a subject. They used to just take a little piece of paper. And then when you read it, you see the subject. And you need to write a long essay about this topic. 
And they, the teacher is there like torturing you. You have to do it well. You have to do the introduction, the development, the conclusion and everything. But the worst part that could ever happen when you do that, you, they give you two hours and one hour and 45 minutes, one hour, 50 minutes. And you realize that you were totally off subject. And you only have 10 minutes left. There is no way you can catch up because you've been writing. You've been busy doing things. And all of a sudden you realize that you are off subject because you did not understand. Brothers and sisters, I don't want you to be busy writing things, to be busy being a, a, a church member, to be busy doing other things when you miss the main question. The main question is, God has placed you in the hospital you are. God has, has placed you in the market you are. God has placed you in the school you are to be on a mission, to share Jesus with other people. Some people have your name beside their name to bring them to Christ. And we, when you neglect it, when you neglect it, you forget to throw wore a life jacket to someone. I have a sad testimony and I still carry this pain and this sadness with me. Upon finishing medical school, we, they sent us to, uh, to a hospital up north and I had uh, Joanne, she was a colleague and very committed doctors, doctor. And, but God pressed upon my heart to share Jesus with her. But I was busy. As you know, if you are in the medical school, the, the last year you are busy. You have to prepare this, to prepare that, etc. And every day I keep saying that I will have time to share the gospel with Joanne. I will have time to share the gospel. I have at least a year. And time passed by until one day Joanne came and said, Dr. Franco, hey, would... Uh, John doesn't call me Dr. Franco. He said, hey, Franco. Can you, can, can you take me to the, to, the, to the bus station? I said, yes, Joanne. And then around 11 o'clock uh, p.m., we took Joanne to the bus station to go to Port-au-Prince because she was supposed to come back on Monday. Joanne never made it to Port-au-Prince. Joanne got an accident, and Joanne died. And that happened so many years, but I still have the pain until today that I miss the occasion to share Jesus with Joan. And Joan died two days after. She never recovered from the coma. And here I am. I was busy doing a doctor. I was busy doing finishing my medical studies when I miss the opportunity of my life to share Christ with a colleague because I value what I was doing at the medical studies more than a soul. And when God impressed into my heart to do it. How many of you here, you are sitting here and for weeks and for months and for years, God is pressing into your heart to go and share Christ with one member of your family, with a colleague at work, with the school, you school teachers, nurses, doctors, whoever you are, God is putting in your heart to share the gospel. But you are ashamed of the gospel. You are shy. You do not want people to take you who cares if they think that you are crazy who cares do it because you don't know you are about to miss the opportunity the song say that soon the rescue season will be over and then you have the life jacket in your hands and you do not throw it and then soon you hear this person is gone with a cancer this person is gone with an accident and then God put into your heart how are you going to survive with the remorse that you could do something but you have not done it you have members of your family, you have cousins, you have cousins, you have nieces, you have friends. They are lost. They are drifting away. They are sinking. This morning, they are sinking. They are patients in your hospital. They are going away. You know they have days and weeks to die. And you have the life message. Share it. I know it's difficult here in the state because you have to be politically correct and then you, you cannot. But let me tell you, 
I had the privilege to work at a hospital in Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami. And I know the policy. I play with the policy. You cannot openly introduce Christ to someone. But if you have the patient asking you, then you can. So when I get to the womb, because I have like, uh, I need, to, I, for people who knows me, I, I love to talk. I love to talk. My wife is totally the opposite of me. My wife will not talk to you. She will see you coming. She will pick a book. And then for the entire time she will be reading, you'll be sitting there. Me, I need to talk to you. So when I get to the womb and, 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 and I cannot address them, I start singing something. And then when I sing it, they say, what are you singing? I say, aha, I got you. So you ask me. You ask me, then I share the song with you. And then you ask me, how are you? I say, I am so happy. Dad has done something great. What? And I talk about Jesus. I find a way, find a way to introduce Jesus to people. That's the only reason you hear. I love worship service. It's good. But let me tell you, you will have eternity to worship God in heaven. Eternity. And then you will have the archangels, the angels, the cherubim. All of them will join with you to have music. But saving people, you have a short window for that. A very short window. And people are dying every day. People are drifting away. And God give you a mandate. Brothers and sisters, I don't want you to waste your time. I don't want you to be distracted. Upon coming this morning, I was uh, driving and I drove from Hartford to here. And then the GPS was nice, good. And then and, and they, the, the system asked me to exit on exit one. Okay? And to come here. And then just a slight distraction. I hear somebody sending a message. I, I miss my exit. And then I had to go. You know, when you're not in the town and you miss your exit, you get lost. Thank God the GPS say we are, we are holding and then bring me here. A small, a second of distraction, you are losing people. Let be in a mission, brothers and sisters. Stop being Democrat. Stop being Republican. Stop being Canadian. Stop being American. Be a Christian and be mindful of the business. You belong to the kingdom of God. You belong to the kingdom of God and God will make you accountable for souls that he has designed to you and you have neglected because you are too busy with your family. You are too busy with your career. You are too busy to pay off your mortgage. You are too busy for other things. Oh, I have to raise up my kids. I have a, I have a missionary. Uh, I believe it was from Tennessee. And she came to me and she was very sincere. And she, she told me, Dr. Franco, I want you to know that God has called me to do mission. I have a few things to do. I, as soon as I finish them, and I, I'll be totally available for mission. And she mentioned, and um, I have to send my kid to college. I have to pay, pay off the mortgage. I have to do this. By the time she finished, she gave me a long list of things that she needs to do that will enable her to be a missionary. And then when I saw the list, it was a lot. And I said, sister, let me tell you, when I add up, Everything you put together, you see the result that I have? The sum of it is mission impossible. Mission impossible. You will never be able to get all that done to do mission. Doing mission is today. Amen? You send your kids off college, they'll find a way to bring you your grandkids to take care of. I, may I have a witness here? They'll send you the kids, and then you'll have this, and... There, there is a reason also why they put the retiring time, 65 and around 60, 65. Because at the time you will start taking care of prostate and then some disease and some this and some that. You think you'll have time. The time for you to do the work of God is today. 
The time for you to, to write the name of someone that you will call after the service is today. You have a cousin. You have an uncle. You have a friend. You have a friend. Long time. You have not shared the gospel. This is the time to do it, brothers. So I'm challenging you in the name of Jesus. Do not waste your time because one million questions will be asked to you. What have you done with the gospel? What have you done with the Great Commission? And you will stand before God. And you will have to answer. You have the chance of your life today. Tonight. Now, after the end of the service. Take your cell phone. Call this friend. Call your relative all over the United States or overseas. Call this man that you say that I will never be his friend. I will never have any relationship again with him. Call him and ask him to forgive you. Present Jesus to him. God will be pleased with you. God bless you. May the joy of the Lord be your strength. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Franco. Uh, what a great word. And I, I just want to encourage everyone as we just close out our time here today. And a couple of things I want to say, everybody. It's so important, you know. We've been going through the book of Jonah, and sometimes we feel like it's our job to convince people to know God. Everyone knows in instinctively that they, they have a vacuum in their hearts. All we have to do is share the news. God will take care of the rest. We throw the seed out, the seed's the gospel. The seed takes root, and it does the work for it. And so it's so important we share that. And you're absolutely correct. I mean, the reason we're here is not just to live our life, but it, our, our job, our our privilege is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I want to ask you all a question because you can come to church all your life and you can watch us online right now. You may know all the stories better perhaps than I even do. But the question is really this. Have you given your life to Jesus? I'm not asking if you believe in Jesus. That's great. But have you given your life to Jesus? He only he, he have no one else. It's Christ or nothing. Jesus does not give us the option to have him and other things. He says, I must be your all in all or I'm nothing. Have you surrendered your life to Jesus? The beautiful thing is this. You're designed by God, for God. And until you give your life completely to God, you're going to hurt yourself and other people. And so it's a wonderful thing when you give your life to Jesus because it gives you freedom. Because you can become the person that God has made you to become. But there's a point... It's appointed for man and woman to die once, then comes the judgment. Are you right with God? You see, none of us are right with God without Jesus. All of us have sinned. All of us have fallen short. Have you given your life to Jesus completely? What he's asking, he loves you so much. And so I want to give you an opportunity today. We do this every single time because I've known people that have come here and they've died the same week. You don't know when your last day is. Are you ready to meet God? So I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And those are home as well. Wherever you're located, if you're in your backyard, your bedroom, your kitchen, your living room, wherever you are, just take a moment right now. The most important thing, you know what I'm saying is true. Inside of you, you sense it. There's something missing. Yes, it's God. You need Jesus Christ. If you'd like to give your life to Christ for the very first time, maybe you've never done it before. Maybe you have, but you've walked away. I'm going to ask you right now to show, this is a show of hands right here so I can know how to better to pray. And online, you can say, go ahead and say online. That's me. Go ahead. Be bold. Anyone to say this morning? Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Let's pray this prayer together in our hearts. Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins and you rose again from the dead. Today, I give my life completely to you the best way I know how. I step down from being in charge of my life. I say, this is no longer my life. It is yours. Now come in. I pray right now. Have your way. Have your way. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins, both known and unknown. Thank you that I am accepted completely based upon what you did in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, there's cards in the front pocket, also online, or you can put on the 
comment section. I prayed that prayer. Let's be bold, everybody. Why not? People are bold for so many things. Why not be bold for the most important thing in life, God himself? And so I gave my life to Christ today. We want to help you along the way. You can fill that out at the connection card. <clears throat> at the end of the service, there's an information desk. We would love to give you a Bible. Okay, everybody? Hey, listen, I also want to encourage all of us. The, you know, the message today, Dr. Franco, is so true that we forget our main purpose. And when you don't do your main purpose, something's missing in your life. But when you share the gospel of Jesus Christ, when you start doing what God's created you to do, He gives you a love and a passion. It is the most wonderful thing in the world. And I thank you for reminding us, Dr. Franco, how important it is to share, to be a missionary, whether we're here or around the world. But right now, we like to be able to do is, this is a time we get to give. And, uh, and so we want to be able to give. We want to have a special offering. We have our normal tithes and offerings, but we also want to give a special gift to Dr. Franco and his ministry. We support him monthly, but we want to do a special project. We'd love to send, I'm believing God for $20,000 if we could. We'd send all those kids to school for the next year. I mean, these, these kids are beautiful. You see how beautiful these children are. We were over there, gorgeous kids, beautiful kids. And uh, they're, man, they're just ready. They're ready to give it all. So we like to be able to bless them today. So if you want to uh, write a check to Cornerstone Church or whatever, just put Go Haiti so we know where to put it. Okay, everybody? And our tithes and off. Let's pray right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We have the privilege to make a difference that what we can do together, we can't do by ourselves, that you have us here to make a difference. And Father, we thank you for Go Haiti. We thank you for Dr. Franco. We thank you that it's good soil, good ground, a good work. We ask you to bless the offering today. We ask you to multiply it. And that we'd see thousands as a result come to know you and change the world. Father, thank you that we get an opportunity to do that. Lord, I also pray that you would show us in our small way how we can listen to you and share our faith. For Father, it's not, us that has to, it's not us that has to make it up. All we have to do is throw the seed, and the seed will do its work. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, guys, thank you so much for being attentive today. Thank you so much for joining us online. It's an honor. It's a privilege. Hey, next week we have Growth Track Step 1 at 1 o'clock. If you want to become a part of our church, get to hear what we believe and all that. We'd love to have you come. If you pray that prayer today, please share with somebody. And also, as you walk out of here today, there's four different ways to give. Uh, go ahead and show that. I almost forgot to do that part. You can use the boxes in the back. Okay, you can write a check. You can give... Uh, you can text Cornerstone Cheshire to 77977. You can put our pay app. Give at cornerstonecheshire.com. You can mail it or you can put it in the boxes behind us. Thank you so much, everybody. My God will supply all of your needs. When you take care of God's work, he'll take care of the work he's given you, guaranteed. God bless you guys, and we'll talk to you real soon. Thank you. 